Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another book review. I just read 13 and a Half, a novel by Nevada Barr. This is in the same vein of her Anna Pigeon novels and it's one step actually above that. And you can see into the dark, twisted, brambled psyche of this man, the butcher boy as he's called, and it volleys between the 1970s, late, late 1970s and 2007. And uh, it's actually quite interesting, I think, because you have a lot to do with um, the Big Easy and you can actually sense that there's a little bit of the supernatural involved and I always like that and this really <clears throat> delves into that kind of really uh, dismal psyche that has no conscience and takes what it wants and even though it seems to have some redeemability in the fact that the the character is trying to do what's right by taking care of his brother and he seems to be torn between two personas in his own mind. It's almost like, he, like he's schizophrenic. And it's, it's very interesting. It's very tragic, but it uh, goes on to explain all these murders that have been happening with mothers killing their infants and why they were driven to do it and why the investigator sees it as not only noble but uh, their understanding of how these women actually came to that point just completely snapping and I myself I don't know it's it's hard to say I've never been a mother but I just I don't if you were in a really bad situation couldn't you find a social worker and get help I guess in that case, they didn't. They were just to the point where they said, "You know, screw it. I'm I'm done. I can't take it anymore, and I don't want my child to go through what I'm going through. So I'm saving them the the trouble." But it still it doesn't make any sense. Honestly, it's it's very sad, and it's just it's very tragic to to read this. But it's still very intriguing. Say, so, oh, come on deal with that right now. Just don't stop. That's why I'm getting a new Facebook so I don't have to deal with that anymore. It's just, I'm sorry. It's just, oh come on. No. I don't want to deal with that. Sorry. Anyway, they're just, I have too many people. I had somebody that I thought I could trust and they were a smooth talking liar and they tried to take me for all I was worth and I'm sorry but Alchemist 2, don't play that. And Alki 2 is standing up for herself and deciding to make a completely new Facebook. And of course, my, my YouTube's going to be the same. It's not going to change. I'm going to have a new email address, so I'm going to be extremely selective as to whom I add onto my email. I just, I just, I can't take it anymore. It's, it's just, it's too much. But anyways, um, uh, Back to 13 and a half. Nevada has this real gift of comprehending what goes on in the human psyche and just how man's depravity of man, basically, or man's search for meaning or lack of meaning or loss of conscience. It's, it's uh, like a train wreck. It's something that you try to avoid when it happens, you can't help but rubberneck a little bit. And it's just that kind of morbid curiosity, I think, that we human beings have. Just so deep into our reptilian brains, I think, that we know that we have to fight, flight, or have fright about a... <clears throat> A certain kind of situation and we all have this but it's just it's challenging to know where somebody who has mental issues like that have a have a breakdown or 
it just kind of makes you wonder what could have been done in that kind of situation because these things happen in real life. This is almost too real, honestly. And I did, I did enjoy it, but there were parts of it that just I thought, how could someone do that to a child, a complete innocent? And there are many instance, instances that I, I found myself just shaking my head in utter, in utter disbelief, even though it's fiction. But I do know that these things happen. You read the news, you read the papers, uh, you you hear about it on social media, and you just wonder, huh, can humanity be redeemed? I honestly think that there is hope for mankind. <laughs> and it has kind of a, a sad ending in a way. Because, well, actually, it's a disturbing ending. It's not a sad... Well, yeah, you, I could say it is... It's more unnerving than it is sad. It's just a commentary on psychotic people. Their, um, their skewed view of reality. Their, um, just how they view others outside of themselves as inferior and why they deserve to it's it's almost like I'll give you a good example um Adolf Hitler was like that he uh <laughs> he had a, a definite imbalance in his mind and he was the type of person who just was under the belief that the Jews were responsible and they must be eradicated and there's one superior race and his is it. So it just, it continues to snowball and you can see where it starts and there's always that seed, that bad seed that grows and, and grows and has no end. But it kind of begs the question, is it nature or nurture? This has been debated for years, but I think it's absolutely fascinating. That's why I love psychology so much. I love psychology. I love anthropology. I love um, psychoanalytics and going into neurobiology. And It's sort of a, a delicate question of, of the mind and how that mind is raised or the background of that mind. It, it, it's just it's hard to pinpoint what really triggers somebody to just completely have a breakdown like that and have no moral compass because a lot of people who are and I watched a video about this on psych to go so I know a little bit now but people who are psychotic are the most charming people you are ever you will ever meet they are more than likely antisocial they uh They'll, they'll build your ego up and then they'll find ways to just completely squash you like a bug. They'll, they'll find methods to use you. And I honestly think I had an encounter with a person who was a psycho. Because this, uh, I should have seen, I, I know I, I saw the red flags now. I'm not going to tell you who this was. But that's why I'm leaving Facebook and starting a completely new page. So if you want my information, PM me. But, um, anyways, they were telling me things I wanted to hear. That's, that's one thing that they do. They, they'll puff you up. They'll, they'll pump you up in any way they can possibly do so, through favors especially. And, or they'll present themselves as some kind of a savior to your kind of needs. And they'll take, they take advantage of people who have gone through loss, especially that is the lowest of the low, especially around the holidays. And, um, I'm just telling you this so you don't do what I did and, and fall for somebody who just is out to get your money. Because these, these bastards are out there, excuse my French, but there's no other word for it. They're just pompous, fake, phony, silicon bastards. They just, there's, there's, they have no soul. They have no, they, they don't care about you. That That's all they, the, all they care about is getting your money and that's it. It's just, their work is done. They've, they've made their money. They've, um, 
they have uh, gotten away with what they wanted and um, I'm just I'm just glad this person is out of my life because honestly I don't need I don't need things like that but um, 13 and a half just gave me more perspective as to what I should avoid and how to avoid it and how these individuals actually function against society they just they're not social people on, on the inside they might seem on the outside that they want to integrate with society but they really don't they want nothing to do with it they just they want to have their own way they want to um create a world in which uh well, they don't understand it. it doesn't exist anymore, basically. They want to take that element and completely eradicate it from their lives. Like uh, Butcher Boy, oh my gosh, he just... Ooh, talk about messed up. <laughs> anyway, it's just it's an outstanding book. I really enjoyed reading it. It was woefully short. I couldn't put it down. It's just like any other Nevada book that I've read. And honestly, I'm hoping that... Boar Island has a sequel because remember my review on Boar Island, it ended on kind of a cliffhanger and I thought, well, Nevada, please don't live, leave us hanging. This is, <laughs> that's not nice. And I hate it when authors do that, but they do that so they can prove a sell. It's like a to be continued. You know how this works. It's the selling point of just the anticipation of trying to figure out how your theories and how your predictions will come to pass and I'm not sure what she, she's going to be doing with this particular family in um, the coming book but I'm intrigued to see what, what will occur and I, I love to see Anna in action Anna's become one of my favorite heroines of all time Yeah, forget Wonder Woman, forget all those uh, forget Supergirl Forget uh, Zatanna. Forget uh, <laughs> Black Canary. Black Canary. Forget um, Black Widow. Uh, who else? We have a, uh, Captain Marvel. Forget Captain Marvel. Forget all these uh, superheroines. It, it doesn't matter. She's the real superheroine because she uses her mind to overcome problems and get herself out of jams that normal per normal people most likely could not. Um. I really don't have that much else to say today other than I've been reading uh, Amy Poehler's Yes Please, which I have enjoyed immensely. I will do a review of it uh, fairly soon. I am finishing up my um, Eros. I'm going to be writing some other tales here. I'm just going to look at my Google Docs for a nanosecond. I'm writing The Traveler. The Traveler was something that I came up with long ago. He's basically a time swiper. He's another he's another variety of um, time traveler. Then we have uh, Honey Rose, which is going to be an Eros. Sounds like one, doesn't it? Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to be writing another... Um, combination of... Well, there's going to be a, a collaboration fanfic that I write with Brightstar that uh, contains... Ah, uh, sorry, I'm itchy. That contains Pee-wee's Playhouse. Again, it'll it'll be a huge mech that the Playhouse morph it, morphs into. That was her idea, not mine. Uh, I'm going to be writing a parody of I Wish I Were, I wish I were a Baller. I'm not really a, a good rapper yet. <laughs> I'm still learning. I am a poet, but rap is a little bit... I have rhythm, but rap is... Rap is an art. It's just very challenging. You think it's easy? It's not. Uh, I'm going to be writing Chimichanga Mardi Gras. Actually, Mardi Gras, excuse me. Uh, Bollywood or Bust. I'd, far, I'd almost forgotten about that. Uh, Hoops is another one that I have been kind of on the back burner. Uh, I got a whole bunch of Chimmy and Changas that I want to do in the future that are, are going to be seasonally based. Uh, 
But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely busy. <sighs> Excuse me for that. I didn't mean to yawn, but I am reading quite a bit. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some <coughs> artwork. Uh, not really sure what else I'll, I will be doing, but I'm I'm hopeful that I get to um, just go to school. Um, maybe go into art school. I may not have to go to art school because I have a friend that said he would help me uh, get build me a computer. Actually, build me a computer and build me software that I could use to animate. Uh, basically, all I had to say, other than I'm traveling over this weekend, so I will be putting updates on YouTube quite a bit. And you will see other updates on my stories as well. So I will keep you in the loop about that. I'll give you the down low and the 411. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. And of course, I've said it before, but Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Hanukkah is already come and gone. Kwanzaa is coming up. Actually, uh, after Christmas, it's Boxing Day and Kwanzaa this year. Kwanzaa, like Hanukkah, is eight, eight nights. Um... Then it'll be Epiphany on the 6th of January, which I celebrate. It's considered the true birthday of Jesus Christ, but a lot of scholars haven't really concurred upon that. Whatever, I'm still celebrating it. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing my family. Um, <laughs> But it should be an interesting year. This this coming year, I have a really good feeling, and I I know it's going to be a lot better than this one was. This this year wasn't so bad as 2016 was. 2016, uh, I called the suicide hotline five times, and I almost ended my life. I, I'm too much of a coward to do it, but I kept on being compelled to just end it. But I I thank God I didn't do it. I just I just. Actually, I have too much to live for. I, I've just begun living since my dad died, and I had never known that until I realized just how cloistered I was in my little bubble. But you don't really come to realization until you lose something, I think, and then you find yourself. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. So until next time, live long and prosper. Ciao, Tootsie.